that's the ultimate goal of doing well in the MCAT is remembering that you can probably get a lot of points just by thought process, having the correct thought process to get to the right answer. Ali, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. Are you excited to wrap up the half-length diagnostic today? I'm very excited. This this has been so fun going over these questions from your perspective. Yeah, it's uh, it it's it's been very interesting for me, um, and I hope reassuring for students. Again, ultimately, at the end of the day, the goal show students not necessarily right and wrong. Uh, it's it's fun to learn the little tidbits like last week thymus and T cells, uh, but really ultimately thought process because that's the ultimate goal of doing well in the MCAT is remembering that you can probably get a lot of points just by thought process, having the correct thought process to get to the right answer. That's the goal. So uh, we are finishing up with the psych soch passage or uh, the psych soch section rather. Yeah. doing our last set of discretes. Again, everyone can get this half-length diagnostic for free at blueprintmcat.com by signing up for a free account. So go do that and go take this test or just follow along with, with us if you want to uh, improve your MCAT score, which I think, like, who doesn't want to improve their MCAT score? All right, let's, uh, let's rock and roll. I'm gonna start with question 28. Students investigating Weber's law notice that one student is just able to perceive that a black circular dot on a sheet of paper is larger than another dot when the first dot is 100 millimeters across and the second is 115 millimeters across. If the same student is presented with a black circular dot that is 50 millimeters across, which of the following is the diameter of a dot that the student would just be able to per perceive as being larger? All right, so I have no idea what Weber's law is other than it's saying, hey, here's a thing where you can perceive differences in size. Yeah. At one is 100, one is 115, so it's 15% larger. Uh, and so if I take 50 millimeters and say, okay, what's 15% larger? Um, then I would go, it's 65. So answer choice D is 65. And I hope I get that right. Um, so I think you're right on your logic. But <laughs> we need to review a bit of the, like the, you did the math too quickly, maybe. Okay. So, so just real quick answer choices here, 35, 42.5, 57.5 and 65. So Let's let's uh, let's rewind and see where I messed up my math. Help me, help me out, Ali. Yeah. So uh, it's fifteen percent greater than fifty. That's what we want, right? Correct. Fifteen percent of fifty is not fifteen. Fifteen percent of a hundred is fifteen. So oh, it's seven point five. Yes. Darn it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just dumb math. Uh, obviously, they wanted to trick me and put 65 there. Yes. Why did I say 15? That is so weird. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, 7.5, which is 57.5. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's our answer. <laughs> I swear, I'm really good at math. Uh, I was just, I was trying it's to. It's an easy mistake. And yeah. AMC is so good at trying to think what kind of mistakes someone moving too fast or someone yeah. overthinking or someone forgetting part of the equation would do yep. and include those in the answer choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got a little cocky with that one. Oh, well. 15% uh, of 50 is definitely seven and a half. All right. Got it. 29. Cool. Roman numeral question. So which of the following would not qualify as negative reinforcement? So before we get into those Roman numeral question, let's go over negative reinforcement. So mm. Ryan, you're approaching this question. What's negative reinforcement? Negative, minus sign, taking away Perfect. something. All right, we're gonna take away something to reinforce the behavior. Yep. So no chores for you because you got an A on the test. No chores for you because you were actually studying hard this week. Yep. So this would be an example of negative reinforcement. Got it. It's a Roman numeral question. And we're looking, it's both a Roman numeral question and a not question. So it's kind of like a lot of tricks mm. you know, with, with this one, but we'll, we'll approach it systematically. Roman yep. numeral question, we'll start with a Roman numeral occurring in exactly two of the answer choices. 
to eliminate two from our first try. So which one would you want to start with? Uh, so Roman numeral two is only in two of the answers. Perfect. Roman numeral three is only in two of the answers. So one of those. One of those. Okay, perfect. We'll start with Roman numeral two. Okay. A parent wants to get his son to stop playing video games right after school and says that he will make his son mow the lawn nope. on the weekend <laughs> if the son continues to play video games right after school. Are we looking to reinforce the behavior? Uh... We're looking to reinforce the behavior, but we're adding something and not taking something away. Yeah, I'm looking to reinforce studying or something, but I'm punishing the video games, right? So yep. this would not be negative reinforcement. Therefore, is it in or is it out? It's out. So it's out on negative reinforcement. Correct. But we're, we're asked for what's not, not. negative reinforcement. So this is in. This is in. <laughs> oh, yeah. you got to be so careful. See, All right. Yeah, so so be two, very, very careful. So two is a right answer. Perfect. So we're left with answer choice B or answer choice D. Perfect. So, so between, between those two, uh, Roman numeral one is in both of them. Roman numeral Perfect. three is only in one. So let's go with three. Perfect. We'll go to three. A researcher wants to teach rats to press a lever so each time the rat presses the lever a loud irritating alarm <laughs> bell is shut off um uh, uh for a few minutes mm. so that sounds like right we're reinforcing something we want the the rat to do something perfect we took What's... away a loud uh -huh. irritating alarm bell so this is negative reinforcement which means it's not the right answer because we're looking for not. So three Perfect. is not a right answer, which leaves us answer choice B, one and two only, without even looking at Roman numeral one. Excellent, yes. So this strategy is only geared towards not having to read all three Roman numerals. So yeah. we can save time by following this strategy. Obviously, if you started with one, you could have answered it maybe just as fast, but it's not a guarantee because like starting with one is kind of like the high risk, high reward mm -hmm. because uh, there's a chance you only eliminate one, but there's a chance you eliminate three. So I, I go with, I will always eliminate two if I start with Roman numeral two. So I think that's the safest bet on every question. Got it. Awesome. Uh, answer choice B. And last question. Disulfiram is a common drug used to treat alcoholism by inhibiting the body's ability to process uh, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde builds up if alcohol is ingested, resulting in flushing, nausea, and discomfort. This kind of treatment is an example of... All right, so uh, we're, we're basically treating something to give someone uh, a negative, uh, not in the negative positive sense, but a bad, a, a bad reaction to drinking alcohol. So A, operate extinction. B, a conditioned stimulus. C, aversive conditioning. Or D, social cues. So I'm drawn to see immediately, right? Aversive is kind of like we want to avoid uh, aversive. So uh, even without thinking of the other ones, like I, I think C is the right answer just because I like the word aversive. Um, but let me see if, if I can get to uh, something else, right? So operate extinction. We, a couple weeks ago, we had uh, a couple, uh, like a passage or two ago, we had one where it was behavioral extinction. And you talked about uh, that being, right, if, if I'm training a dog to sit, I give them a, a Scooby snack every time and I no longer give them a Scooby snack, then that command to sit no longer works because they're like, well, I'm not getting a reward for it, so I'm just going to forget what this is all about. Operant extinction, like to me, I think of operant conditioning. Isn't that uh, the whole uh, like Pavlov's dog, operant conditioning, like stimulus and response? Um, uh -huh. That would be classical, but oh, operant classic. is the is what we were talking about. Okay. Like with the dog example, with the dog. that's an example of operant. Yeah. So it's a very similar concept. Yeah. So um, more of the same concept. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm not taking something away. I'm not like a person's not forgetting something. They're they're ingesting something, feeling bad about it, and then going. Exactly. I, I don't think I like this yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, be a conditioned stimulus, right? I am conditioning. I, I, I'm drinking alcohol uh, and I'm feeling bad. 
And so that's definitely seems appropriate, but is that the treatment condition stimulus? Maybe, I don't know. So I'm gonna leave B in there. Aversive conditioning, again, like the word aversive to me is like, I want to avoid aversive. Seems like that, I don't know. Maybe I'm just drawn to aversive too, too much. D social cues just doesn't fit with this one. So I'm left with B and C. And I'm gonna pick C just because I like the word aversive, even though that's probably the red herring and it's it's trying to No, me. C is our correct answer. Ooh. The red herring is actually B because this is the unconditioned stimulus, not the conditioned stimulus. So okay. uh, let's talk about uh, aversive conditioning. So mm. aversive conditioning is a type of classical conditioning. Okay. And it's exactly what you said. We want to avoid something. So let's say... On I smoke, or in this case, like it's for for alcoholism. Mm-hmm. So I say every time I drink an alcohol, they give me this treatment. So this is the job of this chemical is to give me flushing nausea and discomfort. That's the unconditioned stimulus. You didn't have to condition me for this, but every time you give me this drug, this is what the drug does. Mm. It's unconditioned, and I need training for me to feel this way after taking the drug. But the condition stimulus in here would be the alcohol, because after, let's say, a few weeks of doing this, every time I see the alcohol, now the nausea I feel in response to the drug transfers to the alcohol, and that's the conditioning I'm doing. So the alcohol now makes me feel nauseous, therefore I will drink less. So um, B would be like applies to alcohol, not the drug. C is the correct answer. We are the treatment is aversive conditioning. We're trying to uh, mostly stop drinking by associating. This is called associative learning by associating the negative um, uh, response to the drug to with the alcohol. Okay. So that's why C is the correct answer and B is our red herring. Okay. What what would the social cues be? I mean, it seems. Straightforward, but for the yeah. MCAT, what what would social cues look like? Yeah, so these are like nonverbal cues that in society we use in communication, like facial expression or body mm. language, like more like symbolic interactions. What about what about like like smokers have their own section and aren't welcome with everyone else? Is that a social cue? Uh it has to be like in an interaction. Okay. So I wouldn't say it's a social cue itself. Like this would be an example of like positive punishment on the drinking, uh, on the um, on the smoking. Like you're smoking, you have to go with the in the smokers section, even though that section could be very fun. So <laughs> it's yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. So we finished. Uh Psychos, we finished the half length diagnostic. So, here on the MCAT podcast, we've covered Blueprint MCAT full length 10. We've covered full length one. And we've covered now the half length diagnostic. All of those are available for free in podcast form uh, on the YouTube channel. So, go watch those, go take those tests. Um, full length one and the half length diagnostic, everyone gets for free at blueprintmcat.com with a free account where you get lots of other free goodies too, like a a customized study schedule tool, 1600 plus flashcards on a space repetition platform, and uh, much more. And then full length 10, as well as the other uh, eight full lengths uh, you can get um, by purchasing some full lengths from Blueprint MCAT, which are the best third party exams out there. So, Ali. Thanks for closing out the half-length diagnostic with me. Um, I actually did pretty well, right? Over the last couple passages and the last uh, couple discrete sections, I think I only missed a couple questions. So uh, yeah. I think I think maybe uh, a 124 because that that scale on <laughs> on the the psych so section is not very friendly. Yeah, yeah, not not 124 though, not that harsh. <laughs> like you did great. Um, yeah, thank you for having me uh, on on the podcast. And uh, I just want to point out, like, this podcast has so much more than the test reviews. Like, we're very grateful you're doing this test review of the half length and the the two full length exams. But uh, I have to say, like, all of my tutoring students watch your podcast. They they love the advice they're getting here on on prepping for the MCAT and. Like what to do as an undergrad? I know, yeah. like it's a it's a very stressful time being a pre med, and the podcast is helping a lot. So uh, thank you, Ryan. 
Yeah, you are welcome. Thank you, everyone, for following along. We have more great MCAT content coming along, so don't unsubscribe just yet.